Hey everybody, Phil Smy here, of course. You know, the other day I had the chance to sit down and have a chat with Leonard Berger, and he's a multi-talented individual, and his journey spans data analysis and market research all the way up to fintech and software banking and other things too. Leonard's curiosity and passion for innovation have led him on quite a remarkable path, leading him, finally, to pursue an EMBA with Quantic School of Business and Technology, like I have. And that's technically the subject of our chat, but it doesn't get a lot of screen time due to the vast expanse of our conversation. We talk about Leonard's unique perspective on the transformative power of technology, the importance of continuous learning, and then finally how an EMBA can provide a framework for personal and professional growth. Get ready for an engaging conversation that hopefully will inspire you to embrace your own North Star and explore the boundless possibilities that lie ahead of you. Watch the interview, and I'll be back afterwards for a little follow-up. So, nice to meet you face-to-face. -face. Definitely, yes. Nice to meet you. Because you were in the Quantic... I was in the... I, the I, call, I watched please. your um, thing with Grace. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like I'm doing, I'm in the midst right now of my quantic experience, as I call it. And, uh, I, you know, I'm talking with lots of people, doing lots of uh, yeah. chats with people. And I thought, what better thing to do than to steal Grace's guests? So uh, <laughs> that of course, yeah. seemed to be the natural thing to do. And, and because you were, you were already talking about it, a lot of what you talked about on there is kind of the thing that I wanted to cover. Um, cool. You know, but I'm curious about your background. You have an interesting trajectory, it seems, that you went from one thing to another. But maybe I, I, it, it's well, it's you've done a lot of things, I think. In, in terms of yes, yeah, <laughs> I, I've been told that once or twice as well. I, I, sometimes I lack focus. Um, I think it's my curiosity; it's just endless. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I've. Um, I kind of started my career more as an analyst of data, uh, kind of marketing data in a smaller, relatively smaller dealership group in, in the UK and Wales. Um, so England and Wales. Um, then I fairly quickly moved into market research, given my, my appetite for knowledge and, mm. and also my endless curiosity. Uh, so I joined Nielsen at the time, uh, obviously a large American market mm. research firm one of the big ones. And then I did that various roles in Nielsen for four years to then join um, on invite by the MD at the time, uh, Iptos in the Netherlands. Um, and that was mainly based on my interest in tech and fintech. Um, then the pandemic hit. So that was interesting because I was flying back and forth between uh, Bristol and Amsterdam. Where I'm, based. I'm originally Dutch. I'm currently in the Netherlands. This is my right. mom's house, which you oh. see in the back. Um, because it's my son's uh, son's holiday, school holidays. Oh, so right. Okay. Wonderful. It's nice to, nice to go back to fam. Um, but yeah, no, so um, in the Netherlands. And then uh, eventually, obviously, the pandemic hit. And then I had some conversations with uh, who is now the global CEO of Ipsos to join. He was still the MD in the UK at the time. But obviously, that was a kind of a, a period whereby we had to, to wait. So the, the pandemic was quite the, the interesting, obviously, uh, for everyone. And there's mm -hmm. a lot that has happened. Um, I kind of got away with it relatively unscathed there were a few months with without income but then mm -hmm. I, I quickly joined it was in the uk so that was nice um when i say without income there's some income but not a lot of income because i, I was i was downgraded to part-time uh for oh, right um so that was interesting then i joined um so uh, yeah it was uk for a bit um working with financial services a lot and hence i mean my interest in fintech obviously that that shines through on linkedin so eventually i got a call from a recruiter uh, to join software banking software um, in Bristol. So they have an office. They they have one business unit that has a global office in Bristol. Hmm. Uh, so I joined that back in December. Um, then the, there's, a, there's a bit that's not on my profile, but I, I joined, I briefly joined a New York based scale up. Um, that was, that was a short lived adventure mm -hmm. as that was right before the FinTech slump. So, uh, but I, I quickly rejoined software banking afterwards. Hmm. So, uh, so it was what? What is your education background then? Like, like, how did you even come out and so, get into data yes. an analysis? Even let's say, if that was the um, 
Kind of, yeah. So it was like at Nielsen and at Ipsos, it was mainly kind of both analyzing data and, and presenting that back to clients. Mm. Uh, so there was a bit of client management, a bit of data analysis. Um, I studied international business and management studies in the Netherlands with an exchange period at uh, Westminster Business School as well in London. And part of that in the Netherlands is doing internships. Mm -hmm. So I've done one internship in uh, in Izmir, Turkey. And my wife is Turkish, so that's uh, that's where hence the hence the connection there. Um, and one internship in Bath, England, uh, mm -hmm. and this was my graduation internship. So this it's a very internationally focused, very broad, generic kind of business studies that you do. Right. Uh, yeah, with international business and management. Wow, that's interesting. I mean. Um... How can I put it? I'm trying to think of a correct way to, to phrase all that. That business studies is fascinating because it's in my in my impression, it's kind of very nebulous thing. It's not like a technical study, you know. No. It's not like what I would call. It's not a science, and it's not. It's it's a kind of a combination of things, you know, like dealing a lot with yeah. marketing and with data and pulling that in and coming up with this idea of you know like that which i, I think it's a fa that's a fascinating background definitely yeah so, so like i asked this question of some other people like so when you were 15 did you say oh i want to go and do business management i i, I don't think i i expressed it in those words but i i'd say i've always had an interest in uh, i'd always had an interest in Sorry, there's a, <laughs> the gentleman who is fixing the window here. So, um, yeah, no, I've always had an interest I, I, in business and finance as well. So, like, I, I was always busy with, you know, bank accounts, even from a, from a young age. I don't, I, like, I, I wouldn't say I, I'm, I'm fond of money. I think money is just a, a means to, to an end, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, um, we, we've all got jobs to, to do in our lives. And, and I think, hence the business interest. And I always, and, now, later on in my career, obviously, I realized, okay, that's actually products and innovation that I'm interested mm -hmm. in, right? So it's the products that deliver, you know, they're, they're innovative, they're delivering on something that we need. We have challenges in our lives on a daily basis, you know, we need something solved. You know, it could be anything from, you know, gaining an education. You know, if I sit somewhere in, in a village, uh, you know, currently I'm in a village in the Netherlands in the north, and obviously right. the Netherlands is a small country, it's well connected. So, you know, if I want to get myself educated or my kids educated, you know, there's plenty of opportunities, right. even by living at home. But equally, if you're living in a larger country, you know, like, like Turkey, mm -hmm. and, and you, you sit somewhere in a village and it's, it's slightly more remote, how do you then get educated? So hence my interest in educational technology, mm -hmm. you know, like wanting, because actually that solves that 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 kind of barrier to to gaining you know a certain amount of you know a good degree of education uh, right you know it doesn't have to be Harvard it doesn't have to be you know but it, it 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 can be up there even though it doesn't have the same name you still gain that that level of knowledge from from having access to that education and it's all about accessibility I'd say democratizing yeah. access and, and and hence my interest in fintech and and that's that's something and coming back to the question yeah you know, it's something that i i realized i'm i'm a very you know i'm a very i'm a journalist mm -hmm. but i i like that that's my focus i i like things you know tech for good you know if you look at that yeah. movement you know solving challenges in people's lives that that's right. something and i think business plays a big part of that the private sector plays a big part it doesn't play the whole part you know there needs to be good um good connections between government and, and business and i think i like one of the books mission economy right um i forgot her uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce her name it's i'm not that good but uh mazucato i think she's mm -hmm. an italian professor um in economics and she's she's written a book mission economy whereby you know the she goes back to the like the 50s the 60s nasa you know all of that yeah like moonshots right we need more of those mm. to really get and then it seems to have you know so, so I, I like all of those things, and economics and, and business and, and, and how it all kind of mashes up together to make society as a whole better and to make livelihoods as a whole better. Uh, you, know, and, and, I, you know, I've always been a bit of a late bloomer, I would say. And, you know, I, I but I've always had this idea of the democratizing power of technology, you know, yeah. and I think that. A lot of times in my career, I'm primarily, I think, came into technology writing software. 
But yeah. I was never really satisfied writing software. I wanted to have ideas, you know? So that's why I got into starting companies and 20 years ago yeah. doing that kind of thing. But I love this idea that technology has the power to level the playing field. You know, so I've always tried to make these steps. And, you know, some years ago I went to New Zealand and I went to a Maori village and said, look, you know, you don't have to leave the village. You can be here and still contribute yeah. to the modern economy, you know, and those kind of things that you're talking about. Well, education is the is kind of like the foundation of that. And, yeah. and I'm originally from Canada. And of course, we have huge problems in Canada with remote communities and indigenous yeah. communities and things like that who are desperately needing some kind of um democratized uh, education that's for sure yeah so i i think there's a lot and i th i'm always disappointed when i meet people who don't have that outlook mm. you know and I, maybe that's harsh of me but sometimes i think you know we have an incredible privilege being in this industry being in any kind of technology business yeah. i think is an incredible privilege and an incredible incredible opportunity and I'm always disappointed when people don't kind of rise to that challenge and instead they want to, you know, have a new social media platform or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, and 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 recently one of the kind of, you know, uh, influencers, if you will, of influencers in fintech, um, he, he wrote about the fact that, you know, you can see in fintech that a lot of the business models now that, that kind of come, it, it's not really innovation. It's just literally rinse and repeat of yes. what, what has been done before. And that that becomes quite boring. There needs to be, you know, a big, a big revolution for something to really change things. And I think yeah, obviously there's differences. In, in you're based in China, I believe. Oh, yeah. sorry, Japan. Sorry, yeah. in Japan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but in Asia, you know, in general, sorry, China, Japan. That's very different. Um, uh, in terms of you know, in Asian cultures, you would have things like super apps, right? You've got Grab in Singapore. You've got, I think Japan has yeah, probably has similar ones as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have a slightly different approach to things. But again, there's like an all-in-one platform and, and that hasn't really taken off. You know, we're, you know, people are set, kind of set in their ways. And in, and in fintech, you would see innovation not really solving things. They're literally just replacing one kind of piece of the chain that people right. already kind of use. Whereas but actually there could be... Yeah, isn't that kind of human nature though to to true. replicate yeah. replicate and not innovate? Yeah, yeah, true. I mean, that's and it's the easiest as well. It's, you yeah. know, we especially in business, you always hear the 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 sentence "low hanging fruit," right? What what is what is our low hanging fruit? Let's let's tackle that first, and then by the point most people have tackled low hanging fruit, you know, they 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 get used to that and they they don't really go for oh, this is actually harder. If I solve that challenge, maybe things get better or, you know, there might be. So I, I'm always looking for, and I guess I do that with, with everything I do in terms of networking. Well. I love these conversations. So thank you for inviting me, Phil. <laughs> and, but I, I equally, I, I have these conversa conversations on a weekly basis, like virtual coffees, just talking to people and, and kind of diving into what they do. Mm -hmm. uh, and you get so much inspiration from that. And you can see that actually, so I, I don't think it's harsh. I think probably the people that are, are less, inclined to to have the same kind of spirit as as, as we do it's, it's looking at the bigger picture tech being able to solve those 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 challenges that we have they're they're weighed down by certain things right mm -hmm. maybe because they they were focusing on low-hanging fruit and then you know or, or something else right uh, but I, I i feel like you know you can awaken that spirit in anyone when you start talking about a, a, a topic they're passionate about and then you can kind yeah. of find a connection there yeah i think and it's funny how people things divorce kind of their business life from themselves in a sense you know yeah. like because i've never met somebody who wasn't passionate about something exactly. and, they, yeah. and that something could be rolled out to you know to a greater communal good i and i, I almost exactly. everybody has something like that and yet they'll say oh yeah and so i'm gonna go and work for an insurance company or you know like and and it's like yeah. But couldn't you do something with that? Now, not everybody's an entrepreneur and not every, you know, we can't have 8 billion entrepreneurs. No, you know? that would be, yeah. You know, God help us if we had that. But, um, you know, we can't, we can't have that. We need to have this st structure, but I still yes. think people can clump together into exactly. hierarchical structures that solve these problems and do things Definitely. that are interesting to them. 
Definitely. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I think one of the things in product marketing is like North Stars, what, you know, what's the, or, or in companies and business in general, you know, what's the company's North Star? What's your mission, your vision? And that, and that all kind of connects together. And I like to think that, you know, everyone should have their own kind of North Star mm-hmm. and you shouldn't be like, I would always advise people not to weigh themselves down. I, I sometimes also have kind of conversations, just random, you know, 15 minute chats with people that reach out to me, oh, you know, could I work at your company or do you know anything on, again, from mm-hmm. the network? And I, especially younger people, I would always say, you know, don't get weighed down by anything, you know, just focus on your North Star, focus on what you want to achieve in your life. And and don't think that something is, is like a sidetrack because you will learn something from something that might seem completely irrelevant to what you want to achieve in life. But actually you learn something, maybe you fail or maybe you succeed. And that will teach you something for what you need to achieve later, again, to get to your North Star. Yeah. I think it's, yeah. I, I mean, it takes a lot of, you know, sometimes it takes a lot of energy to keep going uh, in life, but I, I think it's, it's worth it in generally. And then coming back to your point, you know, connecting yourself and your passions to your business self. Yeah. I think that's, you know, it, it's possible. And it's not for everyone. Some people want to be, you know, in, in nonprofit. But even then, if you have a commercial mindset in a nonprofit environment, mm. You will see that that more you know that growth the growth trajectory of that kind of charity could be mm. immense. I think one of the so an example I want to give there connecting to all of what we just discussed is Ecology in, mm. in Bristol. It's quite it's, it's getting bigger and bigger. They do so basically you can it's it's like a Netflix subscription. You can get plant, uh, trees planted anywhere in the world, including you know if you pay a bit extra mm. it's in the UK. Obviously, it's a UK focused business. But there's an interview with the, one of the founders, and he said, you know, I could have set this up as a charity, as a nonprofit, but I knew that the growth there would be growth limitations simply because a lot of people want to get involved maybe in these kind of things, you know, climate tech, all of that. And if you commercialize it, then even the people that are not necessarily very you know, passionate about a certain topic would still get involved and investors would still get involved because they see the, the, the benefit of subscription business, a subscription-based business like Netflix. Right. Where everyone is, is paying money to, to plant trees, so you kind of commercialize that idea. So I, I like that, you know. And then again, that's connecting the business with the with the charitable, with the with every, with everything. Basically. Right. I, I mean, like, there's this movement. I think it's a movement of climate capitalism. You know, yes. um, yeah. which, which I think initially it's I think it's such a losing phrase climate capitalism because (laughs) it it, it just offends people on both sides of the fence it's perfectly (laughs) balanced to offend everybody because anybody who's wants you know is a climate uh change you know uh champion looking to fight that they're like we don't want to get polluted with capitalism and everybody who's in capitalism they say we're not going to waste our time with crap for the climate change thing (laughs) so it's a perfectly losing statement but I also think it's kind of genius in a way because that is, I it think, the way forward. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with setting up a business and making money to make the world better. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, we need to we need to move away from the idea that that's you know that business is you know there and not just for their own benefit and right. just to, you know kind of. You know, it's like this know, idea of the starving artists. artist, you know, like that we yeah. think the only good artists, they have to be, you know, they have to go through struggle and starving and things like this. That's that's what makes yeah. an artist. But, you know, that's kind of a, a very self-defeating concept, you know, because exactly. then you mean you yeah. can't have, you can't be an artist for your entire life because you have to eat. Yeah, exactly. And and, and I've had conversations with people in the NFT space, for example. Right. And obviously they create art as well. They're artists. They're very artistic. But equally, you know, how, how to make money of it? Well, maybe you find your niche. Again, the NFT mashing it up with, uh, you know, with physical art, you know, all of those things have been done as well. And you can kind of, you know, create shows. You have people, you know, if, even if it's local, just get people to go to a gallery, mash it up, find some other artists, do it as a collective, you know, staying open and, and you can make some money off it as well. It's, mm-hmm. it's yeah. It's a, and it's, it's and kind you of will find... The person in that space who really figures it out and really makes a lot of money, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then all the other artists will hate him, and you know. <laughs> and, and all, all will try to be him, yeah, yes. or her. Yeah. And then yeah, they'll exactly. try and rinse and repeat and replicate. Yeah. So I see some some instruments in your. Are you? Yeah, I a was a professional well. musician, so I'm speaking kind of from experience here. 
Yes. Yeah. You yeah. know, like at one point I was reasonably successful as you could be. And then, but you know, you don't make any money doing it. And this is, you know, back in the eighties or nineties. Yeah. And I just said, you know, I've got to do something that makes money. And I, Oh, I hear computers make money. And that's how I got into computers. But, <laughs> yeah. um, that's interesting yeah. because my brother is a, was a musician as well and is now a programmer. So that, I, I think I think there's a lot of simpatico between the two, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and I I actually went around for a decade or more telling people that you know software is a creative business and it kind of yeah. is. I'm I'm a little bit out of it now, but I uh, out of yeah. believing that. But I, I think it kind of is. So let, to bring he, this on, yeah. to bring this on track for me, so that I can edit this down into my podcast. Of course, yeah. yeah of course. Um, after all of that, you do all of these things that you do, and then you say, you know, yeah. I think I'm going to take an MBA. Aha, yes, I did. I think I've I've always kind of given. I, I wouldn't say it's a lack of focus. I, I I really generally am interested in everything that I do, and I can connect the most random things together. Which might sometimes when I'm in a conversation, obviously now even now when we're speaking to each other, I would connect lots of things and I try to connect it back to, to the same thing. But it could be confusing to people, right? Mm -hmm. So and I noticed this as well when I when I started talking about things that I'm passionate about. And from relatively I think say four or five years after graduating from my bachelor's in business administration. So I kind of followed the, the trajectory, right? BBA, MBA. Mm. Um, I realized okay, an MBA would be good for me to kind of create, I think I I mentioned this in the call with Grace as well, uh, to kind of, kind of create a framework for my own mind, to kind of hone in on, you know, apply that framework to everything that I do currently in work and as side hustles. Um, so that that made me come to, you know, I've, I've gone to a lot of MBA kind of conferences or, or, you know, these meetups whereby various business schools come together. And I realized, yeah, very interesting, great people. But I noticed a, a commonality between all of them you had to take out 12, 14 months. You had to pay 70 or 80K. Yeah. And I'm thinking here, uh, up to a certain point not last year, I was the sole earner in the family. I've got a six-year-old. Uh, my wife was finalizing her PhD. I don't have 60 or 70K. I can't afford to step away from my from my, my daytime job. Mm. You know, how do I combine this? So I came across a few, you know, local ones that offer kind of you know, long distance, uh, IE Business School was a long-term kind of candidate for myself uh, in Madrid. They had a global MBA, 60-month program. But again, it would cost up to 50K. Obviously, they have various scholarships and, and, and loans that you could take out. And then I thought, okay, financially, that's not going to – how do I – you know, I'm, I'm always already financially engineering my way to life. Mm -hmm. How do I do that? Um so then I came across a Swiss business school. I, I don't remember the name, but then I looked at reviews. It's like, ah, oh, they're not really accredited. You know, the program is not that good. There's no, you know, there's no networking. There's not a lot of networking. Mm. So I thought, okay, that's that's not going to work. But that was about 5K, I think, in euros. And then eventually, I don't recall how, but I came across Quantic and I started doing the, the intro, introductory courses. And I realized, okay, this is actually quite good. You know, it's, it's an interesting, innovative way of delivering education. I like innovation. I like mm -hmm. you know, products at tech as well. Um, so then I saw, okay, so they have scholarships to a certain extent, you know, depending on your situation. Um, and it's it's relatively affordable. Plus, I can fit it in with my daily life. So right. that, that made me go for it now rather than later. Uh, it was either this now, which I think is, has been very, very beneficial to me in terms of my focus and, and focusing on work and certain you know just one or two kind of side hustles that i'm, I'm mm -hmm. doing currently um or it would have been like 40 i'll be 40 plus 45 plus um or maybe even later and i do an exec mba with you know the uh, lbs or London right. Business school or anywhere else and my employer or you know at the time i'm a, right. I'm a, I'm a manager senior manager but then i you know I'd rather do it now and potentially you know have that framework that i can apply to starting a comp my own company in two or three years than than having to wait till I'm forty or fifty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That that's interesting. I mean, um, I think you're one of the few people I've spoken to who did BBA, MBA, yeah. uh, or EMBA or whatever. Um, so yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, so, do you think you got something apart from networking? Let's set networking aside. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, do you think 
it was goal accomplished with Quantic, that it, it did give you the framework? Yes, I definitely think so. I think all of the conversations I had, so that I think that's an added benefit, all of the conversations I had with various, you know, alumni of, of different business schools, it's like, okay, the, the frame, you know, the, the education is great. The, you know, what I've learned, what I've taken out of it in terms of knowledge is great. But I think the overarching kind of thing was the networking aspect, mm -hmm. right? It's this person is an alumni from that business school. I actually, or we, we've spoken at an event or, you know, there's various people and they all go in, in various places. So it's a, it's a fairly powerful network. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things up till now, like even this conversation has happened because of Quantic and, and right. connecting people. You're based in J Japan. You have a, you have a, a fascinating background, you know, from musician to programmer to mm -hmm. to what you're currently doing. And, and having these conversations with other people, like I said, the NFT artists, some of them also, you know, studied Quantic. So mm -hmm. there's there's like there's such a diversity in in the in the network that you can you can engage with. And again, you know, on the app, you can go in. And kind of yeah. You know, when I go to Turkey, I see people in Istanbul. I, I connected with a with a, a gentleman. Sorry, funny anecdote. I connected with one who is now graduated as well, but he actually his best friend from high school, and and I think elementary school as well, is based in the hometown of my wife and has wow. a coffee shop there. And they so so we then he then said, oh why don't you go there? And then we connected, and it turns out that that he's also. I mean, he's not famous, but he's so there was a big earthquake in 1999 mm -hmm. in, in Turkey, and he was the he was pulled out of the rubble like 96 hours after after it happening. So it's like a survivor of that. And there's a very fascinating story, like this random connection, true quantic, in someone who works for Google in Istanbul uh, to a coffee shop owner in Aydin. You know, to you know, it's yeah. just fascinating how, how these connections can work in in real life. So the networking is is a big part. And I think the networking is really overarching in terms of what I what I've taken out of Quantic, but equally the 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 models, you know, like operational management, all of those things. I had that in as you know during my BBA, but it was it was such a different world. This was in the early well not early late two thousands basically mm -hmm. that I, I finalized my BBA. Um, so much has changed since then and twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two, you know, post COVID, post you know crisis. I mean, it was kind of during the crisis that I was studying my BBA. And, and technology, like the smartphone just came out, right? It's right. revolutionized the way. So looking at that and what I learned from operations management, it's super different to what it is now. So I think, yes, it's definitely helping. And it will be, it's helpful in my current job, making the connections and talking to the right people at the exact level. But equally, I think it will help with, you know, once I go either further up the career ladder, I, I haven't decided yet. I'll, I'll see. I'll follow my North Star uh, or, or indeed founding my own business. Mm. Yeah, I think, um, you know, like I went into it because like everything, I'm just completely self-taught, you know. And yeah. so, you know, in 20 think, years yeah. ago or 20 something years ago, a group of friends and I, we started the first uh, real money mobile phone gambling. Okay. Because um, we were all working for gambling companies at the time. And we said, okay. you know, we, we hear that you can do it with a mobile phone. So we created a company, wrote the software, got a deal with... Uh, Irish Telecom, I think, okay, and, and did all this stuff, and and we were like way ahead of the curve, you know, because we were doing this on cool. WAP phones, you know, not even smartphones. Yeah, and but so it started with that, and then I said, oh, okay, well, let's move that into another thing, into another thing, and another thing. So since then, in twenty years, I've been doing all these companies, but I realized, oh, I don't really know what I'm doing, or I, I yeah. inside, I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. You're just yeah, yeah, just going with the flow, and yeah. you know, whatever so, the day throws at you. When Quantic popped up, I thought, you know what? I think an MBA would be a good thing for me. Also, because I'm very burned out in what I'm doing right now. And I thought maybe this will give me opportunity. So when I went into Quantic, you know, I knew that I could learn the technical stuff. I could learn it on YouTube, probably, if I really wanted yeah. to. But this, I can only do through Quantic. You know, so that's why yeah. I went in and I said, I'm going to milk this networking thing for all it's worth. And, you know, Definitely. so I do this podcast thing once a week and I talk to all these people and, you know, I've talked to like 25 people, you know, yeah. and, and all of that. And I think you, you get ideas from experiences, you know, Definitely. and so Definitely. I'm desperate, not desperately, I'm looking for something new and exciting to do, you know, and, yeah. um, and I thought I'm going to come up with that idea by talking to all these people, I think. 
And Definitely. it's a, it's an incredible opportunity. Um, you know, and what amazes me is that not a lot of other people are doing that. No. You know, not a lot of other people, and I'm, I'm not, you know, trying to name and blame the people in, in my cohort or whatever, but in Quantic in general, a lot of people just put their head down and do it. Yeah. Which is kind of, in my opinion, not getting all you can get out of it. True. No, I'd say there's, you know, there's the, the I wouldn't call them the laggers, but it's just like people that are just there. They want to do, you know, maybe do it and, and finalize it and just get on with their lives, I guess, just for a piece of paper, maybe. Right. Which I feel like I've learned that kind of early on. Um, you know, I wasn't the, the most engaging student when I first started my bachelor's, but I, you know, especially my exchange period, I realized, you know, I, I, I opened up to knowledge and I started sitting in the library, you know, and started reading to random, you know, and started di taking different classes also in, 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 you know, like looking at the economy and all of that stuff. And I think, you know, there's so much you can learn. Mm -hmm. It's it's exciting. It's daunting at the same time, but it's exciting. So I, I, I get from my early experiences as a bachelor's student why how people look at it. And it's like, I need to get through this, get a piece of paper. It looks good on my profile. That's it. But there's so much you can learn. And that's why And I, I'll connect to that. I loved Quantic as well because they say, okay, once you finalize it, you retain access to the courses. So you yeah. can go back. I think that's like. genius. Particularly we'll add, add other courses as well. Plus now I, you know, there's this invite, you know, you've graduated, so you can do this with, with you know, for, I don't know, $600, you can do, uh, you know, business, you know, AI and chat GPT, how to apply it to your business mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. There's courses like that that I've already discussed with my employer and said, look, actually, this is, this is quite cool. And they said, yeah. You see, six hundred seven dollars. That they're happy to pay that, right? right. It, once it goes up to the, the multiple Ks, it's more of a okay. Are you a CEO? No, you're not. Okay, then, then we're not going to pay it. Um, but yeah, no. So that that's that's really really cool. It's like it's like a continuous journey. Uh, and obviously, Quantic is a, a business in itself, right? They need to make yeah. money. So this is a, a, a genius idea of you know getting more money out of your alumni. Yeah. Um, but equally, it's it's a great way of you know we're building new programs, we're building small small kind of professional education, and you have to. You can stick with one place, whereas if you studied at London Business School, maybe they do some of that. Oxford Business School, I think Said Business School does some of it. Mm -hmm. But again, it costs thousands to even do yeah. a program like that. Uh, so I, I really like that as well about Quantic and the, the continuous journey of learning. Yeah, and, and I think that the people who get the most out of it, at least the ones that I've spoken to, are people who have a, you know, a passion for learning. Yeah, definitely, yeah. And then a lot of people with PhDs as well that I've come across that yes. have done content, yeah. yeah, which is which is really nice, definitely. Yeah, you know, and I to get back to that thing where I say, you know, we can't have everybody be an entrepreneur in the world, and you know, there's exactly. always this, you know, there's this real American thing about, you know, everybody has to follow their passion and do their thing, and and, yeah. and I'm like, you know, I hope somebody's passion is to work for two dollars a day putting together your smartphone. Otherwise, you're in trouble, you know? Exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah exactly. And um, that's the automation thing, right? The, the Coming back to that, tech can solve that problem. There are ways to, to automate that. And that's why AI is exciting because, you know, that smartphone can be put together by a machine. And, right. and there's like, if something goes wrong, AI and, and large language models can deal with that challenge. Whereas now they can't. Like robotic is a, is a process. It's zeros and ones, right? You know this way better than I do, but... You know, there, there needs to be a sequence that needs to be pre-programmed. Yeah. But now with AI, actually, that robot can go, okay, the, the chip dropped or or something yes. dropped. Yeah. Again, I've got another arm. I can get that and put it back in. You know, so there's there's exciting things like that people and that unfortunately still have to work in factories in long hours yeah. for two dollars a day to do yeah. that. They can, you know. But th th there's so many different other things, and that's why I'm interested in economy as well. Because then, how you know, how do you think about income? How do you think about taxation? Well, what Universal happens? Income, what happens if you build things. an AI in these machines, and and you don't have to have somebody work for two dollars a day in a factory? Well, what happens to them? Exactly, and you, you know, need to think about these as well. The yeah. impact there, exactly. Yeah, no, definitely. And and I, I think there's there's certain pockets of entrepreneurs working on these things. You know, I I remember very very like early on in the crypto kind of revolution uh, in Switzerland and Zug, they had, um, you know, various startups there. And there was one of them, they've gone bankrupt since, but there was one of them that basically tokenized uh, public assets. So there would be like, you know, things that make money mm. in the public space. So 
you know, could it be parking or all of those things? Sure, there's a taxation element, but then again, there might be a private area that you can tokenize for all of the the, the people that live there. And then again, everyone, it's it's very easy to do, disperse kind of the revenue. Obviously, the business takes a, a minor cut, mm -hmm. but then the, the like there's there's parking spaces if people want to park there. If it's, it's an, you can do that as a as a community rather than having to go through large business models or with the government. Right. So there's there's lots of things there. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's an exciting time and I think AI is going to dramatically well my work has dramatically changed in the last 3 years. Yeah. You know, um from what you know just I mean the writing software work is dramatically different. Um yeah. and the products that you know, I, I run a business that deals with Amazon and, you know, the integration we do with Amazon and using AI on our side is, you know, that's totally different. And it yeah. wouldn't even have occurred to me three years ago oh. to do it, you know, so it's quite an exciting time, you know. Definitely. Yeah. Lots, lots going on and it just needs to be on the right, right track, right? We, yeah, I guess it's hard, it's hard to, to predict, but I, I, I'd like to think in utopian terms rather than you know. yeah that's always yeah. in my opinion star wars versus star trek <laughs> yes. yeah yeah definitely yeah you can either have the empire or we can have the federation so um yeah sorry that's yeah. Not, yeah. yeah no no that's yeah of course not true very true so i yeah i'm hoping that you know with all of the things that are going on in the world that eventually that kind of thrives and survives the tech for good movement i know plenty of people want this to go the right way and everyone wants to live in kind of some, some sort of harmony, whatever mm -hmm. that may, may be and may look like for, for different people. But yeah. Well, Let's thank see. you. For... And, and then education is, is a key, a key part of that, right? I, I think so. I mean, I, I think the technology and that Quantic is using is quite, um, I, I, one of the things that's been quite enlightening to me actually is just being experiencing their platform. I went, wow, you know, yeah. there's a lot there, that really opened my eyes. I think a lot to uh, ed tech. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Enjoy the Netherlands. You. I used to live in Amster. Well, I, I tell people I used to live in Amsterdam, but I actually used to live in Amstelveen. Amstelveen. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I used our, our Ipsos office. So our software banking office is actually in Amstelveen as well. All right. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just below Amsterdam South. Yeah. How long did you live there? Um, two and a half years. Two and a half years. Cool. Uh, I lived in Belgium for three years and then uh, nice. Netherlands for two and a half years, and then I decided uh, I needed sunshine and okay. uh, left. So <laughs> I went to Spain. Yes. So there you I, I, I went from, oh, so I went from the Netherlands to Turkey and then to, to the UK. So, I mean, I had some sun, but it yeah. wasn't very long. And I just went back to the dreary rain. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I was one of those people who always said, ah, the weather, it's not so important. But, you know, after five years in Belgium and Netherlands, it's important. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Cool. Amazing. Thank you, Phil, for the invite. And then let's let's keep in touch. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I'm curious to see your uh, side hustles and future things. Cool. All right. Definitely. I'm going to click the end awesome. recording. And all right. Uh, all right. Thanks very much. So that's it for this interview. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I hope you found Leonard's story as inspiring as I did. It really was a great discussion, something that let me touch on you know, areas that I'm really interested in. His journey kind of exemplifies this, you know, power of curiosity, passion, and the willingness to embrace continuous learning. Leonard's pursuit of an EMBA with Quantic not only provided him with a solid framework, but also opened up a world of networking opportunities and connections. Take advantage of it if you're in the EMBA program. Remember the path to success is rarely linear and it's up to each of us to chart our own course guarded by our own personal North Star, like Leonard says. Until next time, like, subscribe, bell notification, leave me a comment if you like these things. Keep exploring, keep learning, and keep striving towards your goals, and I'm going to try and do the same towards mine. See you soon.